Oh, it is. Look at that. Perfect. Look at the size of that. Guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're in um, sunny St Ives in Cornwall. So uh, we just set up on the beach down in Hale. I'm not sure the name of this beach. Do you know the name of this beach? But uh, we've just set up and it's a glorious day. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, we've got two rods out. We had one schoolie bass, uh, which I've got some clips of, but not the entire thing. The tide's actually going out. We're fishing the outgoing tide just be purely because the weather's bad this afternoon uh, so we're not going to have much opportunity to fish the uh, incoming tide so we'll, we'll keep the two rods out and hopefully get a couple more bass won't we so quickly for this part of the video i just want to explain where we are fishing and why so what we're doing is fishing hale beach which is the very mouth of an estuary where the, the sea will meet the river essentially when we're estuary fishing they've got, there's a couple of things i think may be quite useful for you to know the first thing mainly is um, where to fish in that estuary. So I'd, I'd say what you want to do is fish two hours the outgoing tide and then fish the flooding tide, which is the tide coming all the way in, all the way up. Where you want to fish in that estuary is, is probably different to what you'd originally think. What you want to do is fish the edges of the estuary, so the, the little ledges on the side, say for example on the left and the right. And the reason you want to fish here is because this is where um, I found holds all the, all the natural bait. You know, you may get crab, sand eel or, or worm just coming out from um, the low tides. So instead of just pinging your bait out right into the middle, sometimes think about where you should put it. Put it on the left or put it on the right. Because what I'm finding is that flow of water is a little bit slower there and it tends to hold a little bit more natural bait and therefore holds more fish. What I was doing in terms of the rig is I was finding the running ledger the absolute best rig for the scenario. The reason I think is because you just get absolutely brilliant bite detection. But the running ledger just allowed for fantastic bite detection, you know, I, I could tell it was a bite straight away because the fish would pick that bait up and run away and it just caused that rod tip to bend straight away. So those two things I wanted to say, uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. What's it feel like? Hmm? Go towards it. Case of fish out of it. Not the fish, the birds. What's that, babe? What's that? It's a baby. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder that too. You never know, see, I like to put the pads through. There we go. Let's get this little one back. Welcome back to another section of the video. Where it's the last day of holiday today and we're back down in St Ives. I'll uh, show you in the background. This is St Ives Beach and I think that's called Port Mia Car Park where we've parked there. We just walked over to uh, a small spot. This is called the Man's Head and you can see that. That's, that's the Man's Head just there. Uh, I actually got a line out the first cast. I got a really small mackerel which I was of size but we kept it as, as bait. At least just got a line out now. The plan is what we're going to do is we're going to set the beach caster up just behind me. Um, I'm going to put fish pulley panels on that one because I think there is a bit of rocks just in front of me here. I would lug worm as bait uh, and then squid and mackerel wraps. And Lucy, we're just going to spin on this rod here as well, just taking it in turns. So 
just when we have a moment, I wanted to talk about what's in my lure box. This one that's fishing out. It's a bit wet. But in my lure box, I've got two sides. First side is soft plastics and spinners. The other side is plugs. When you're lure fishing for bass, a lot of people like to use plugs. A plug is a type of, almost like a type of plastic material. And you've got, you know, it, it goes in the water, it just goes like that and uh, entices the fish in. Different types, you've got top water lures, which obviously sits at the top and you can just dance these about and the fish will come up. Then you've got bottom, sort of mid-depth lures or long depth lures. You can see they've got that, that little bit on the front and that just brings it lower. The water pushes against it and brings it lower. The deeper the venue, the deeper you can use uh, different types of lures. And then you've got ones with shorter bits at the front that are um, mid-depth lures. So just play about and see which uh, depth about the bass are biting or the fish are biting. That, that, that's generally how a plug works. What we've also got then is soft plastics. As it said, it's soft and it's plastic. At the front then you've got what's called the jig head, if I can get that on camera, that little little bit there. And that just sinks. This is weedless and that the hook is covered, you can see the hook is in there. Basically what happens is the bass will bite through that uh, and then they'll get hooked like that. Each of these type of lures work just as well as the, the, the other, just in different venues. So what you've got to do is just experiment to see which is best for that particular venue. Last of all, it's just the standard spinners. For example, that's a macro spinner, macro intimidation, looks like a fish, 60 gram, going all the way down to different lures, 50 gram, and they just spin in the water. Play about, see which ones work best for you. Get a video of you with your macro. Yeah! Present! Lovely. Is it One thing I wanted to quickly say here is about how good single hooks can be when spinning for both mackerel and bass. You can see what's happened here is when uh, Lucy struck into the fish, it's hooked it quite badly and it was quite difficult to get off the hook. That can be quite bad for how long the fish is out of the water and how it will be when it goes back. So a lot of anglers lately are switching to single hooks rather than the trebles purely just for that reason. But one downside to that is sometimes they can slip off the hook. But to be honest, when feathering for mackerel in the past, I've been using single hooks and I've really had no problem. Um, I probably only had one or two just come off the hook, so that can be brilliant. One, one thing as well I just wanted to quickly say here is, you know, you don't really want to throw the mackerel back like I did, but because I was qu at quite a height here, I really had no choice. It was, it was the only thing I could do, to be honest. Um, but, but he did go back and he swam off fine. Look at that for a fish. What? Look at the size of that. What is it? Wow. That's a big bass. Oh, oh. oh, it's not that big. It's not as big as yours. Yeah, but that's a nice sizable bass. Right, so we just had that lovely little bass there. I'm going to put it back in a minute. I'm just going to measure it. It's been every size. It's probably about 31. I'd say about maybe 29. <laughs> okay, he is. 
So um, sadly at this point the battery in the cameras died so uh, we weren't able to get much more footage so we did wrap it up after probably another hour or so the, the, the water went quiet and uh, the tide was already all the way out so um, we, we weren't catching too much and we had to get back to um, where we were staying so I hope you guys enjoyed the video I'd be really really grateful if you could please just drop it a like um, subscribe and hit that bell notification that just um, means my channel can grow and I can keep posting videos like this um, so finally just thanks for watching um, please watch the other videos on my channel if you, if you think you'd enjoy them and um, thanks very much